Hi everyone. Well, it's been a few weeks since I've put up a video, and that's because I've been shopping around, getting supplies together to improve the sterility and the efficiency of my home laboratory setup. Now, if you remember, I was having problems with mold spores getting into my sawdust spawn, causing issues with my morels. Um, and of course, this hasn't been a problem with the oyster mushrooms, but you know, possibly uh, could be a reason maybe why I'm getting lower yields sometimes, you know, some some instability there. So improving my lab setup will, will you know, cut out any of those factors that might be getting in the way. And you might notice that my camera quality has gone up. And that's because I switched from using a Hero 4 Silver. I've used that for quite a while. And now I've bought a, a Sony FDR uh, AX53. And this camera is pretty much the, the highest consumer end camera that you can buy. You can see I, now I have the ability to zoom in. It has 20x zoom. It has great active optical stability, so when I'm walking around outside, there'll be no herky-jerkiness to it. And I got it on a cheap tripod right now, that's why I kind of hear some creakiness. But it has a 5.1 inch, or 5.1 channel surround sound mic, you know, Dolby mic. And so the audio is probably a bit better as well. I bought a macro lens for it. And it's also 4K, so expect in the future to see some really cool up-close, high-resolution shots of mushrooms, uh, bugs, you know, anything I, I deem very interesting uh, for YouTube footage. And also, too, I'm going to be donating my Hero Silver to another YouTube content creator that uh, I enjoy watching his videos, and he desperately needs some, uh, some better image quality, too. First thing to talk about is I have this nice new Burroughs brand work table that I got from Home Depot. And you can see it's nice heavy gauge steel, very sturdy, I can't really shake it at all, it's heavy. And that's going to absorb the vibration of these uh, fans running on the flow hoods a bit better because I was having issues where stuff would shake a little bit. And I'll still keep this older table in here you can go because it has some storage space underneath of it and you know I can always maybe set bags on top of it to still utilize the space but that table was that was having issues where say it was cold in here the top of it would be too thin and it would warp and then that might have some space underneath the flow hoods for contamination to come in so that's not good This flow hood right here, I've had for over 10 years now, and it's the SR1 model from Fungi.com. And it's pretty much the, the entry level flow hood that a lot of uh, people who get into the mushroom cultivation, it's what they choose. But the filter's old, I'm sure it doesn't you know, give as good of airflow as it used to. And it definitely doesn't give as much airflow as the new pleated filters. So I have a new filter for it. They're, they're very thick, about almost eight inches thick. And I'll be making a video of, of switching that out. But for the moment, I'm gonna leave that be. I bought a four by eight sheet of PVC. Did you know PVC comes in sheets? And nice thing about PVC is it doesn't react with isopropyl alcohol at all. So, you know, that's good for our application because we're going to be using a lot of isopropyl alcohol. And what I'll be doing with these sheets, as you see, I've cut it to about, oh, I think it was 13, 13 and an eighth inches high and 30 inches long. And I'm going to put walls up on the side and seal these cracks with tape. And that way, it'll prevent any contaminated air from swirling in in kind of like eddy currents because 
you know, they always tell you to keep this, keep your items as close to the center of the flow hood for a reason because even though you have the laminar air coming out, you'll still have eddies swirling in on the margins. But having something like this that I can wipe down and sanitize will prevent that. And of course I'm going to have this other sheet for the other side. And then on top of all that, I got a, a custom cut piece of uh, tempered glass. Step out here a bit, you can see it. You can see the pane of glass is the same width as the flow hoods plus the, the width of the, the thickness of the board, the PVC board. And that will sit right on top. And that way I can look down into it, still do work. I'll put a work light on top so I'll, everything will be nice and lit up on the inside and the white sides of these walls will bounce the light back around and be, you know, well illuminated. And of course, too, I'll seal everything that has a crack to it with tape and wipe it down, keep it sanitary. And the, the side walls, I'll put four fat wood screws or more in to secure it. And then the glass pane, all it'll have to do is really just lay on top because it's pretty heavy. And also too, I purposely didn't get this glass pane any deeper and or, you know, greater depth because it's probably gonna come out about, about here because I'll set some of it back on top of the flow hoods. That way I can still reach in a bit easier and have some work but you know still have the advantage of the air at the top being encased and being more sanitary. When I first started out doing mushroom cultivation I would buy the the styrene plastic dishes that you would get in sleeves already pre-sterilized but I ran into so many issues with that where every time I would get a bat shipped to me, they would be bouncing in transit so badly that the, the edges of the dishes would cut holes in the plastic, uh, dishes would break, and you know overall they would lose sterility and any value in mushroom cultivation because you can't pressure cook those. And so then I bought a lot of these large 100 millimeter, they're actually greater than 100 millimeter dishes though, and you know they work decent but you know the, the problem with them is you can see you see how much play they have and they're quite tall they don't need to be that tall I think these are are 20 millimeter deep and not really great quality glass but most mostly issue was that you know that they have this great gap that you have to wrap at least two wraps of uh, the lab film, parafilm, to seal it. And so, because I'm going to be using a lot more petri dishes, because I'm going directly from agar to sawdust, I have invested in some high quality dishes. Now, some of these, I bought one batch of 12, you know, sets, you know, 12 dishes. There's actually, you know, 12 sets of dishes, top and the bottom. And I found an auction on eBay for 50 bucks for 12 of these Kymax ones, which is a great quality Petri dish. You can see they are quite a bit more shallow, which is what I want. And these, these older dishes right here, although they were advertised as 100 millimeter, they're a little bit fatter than that and they never fit into any Petri dish rack that I ever bought. So that's why you always see me just stacking them, put them in bags and having to slide them out in foil pouches. But these ones now will fit into Petri racks, which I, I have some, I'll show you in a second. But yeah, I got a great deal for 50 bucks for these, for a set of 12 k Max on eBay. So, so check out eBay for lab supplies like that. And you know, who cares if they're used as long as they're broken, they're gonna get re-sterilized. And uh, you know, 
I don't think these ones are actually used. I think they're just old. But you know, chances if you, if you if you're worried about possibly something being in there, you know, questionable, you know, maybe some crazy biological meter, maybe put it through the dishwasher first. <laughs> but then I have two sets of nice Pyrex brand. And just as same quality as the, the Kymax. But you can see both don't have nearly as much play. And the top dish isn't nearly as wide as those big fat old ones. <laughs> 